I will be covering transition and reflection for linear equations, and we will be looking at transition to the left first, which will be fx plus a. And if y equals to 2x plus 1, then I substitute in, let's say, 3. So fx plus 3 it will be equals to 2x plus 3 plus 1, which is 2x plus 7, which is this blue line. And it is 3 units to the left. And to, to move it to the right, we'll be using f x minus a. And if y equals to 2x plus 1, and I substitute, substitute in 2, it become f x minus 2 equals to 2 bracket x minus 2 plus 1, which will be 2x minus 3. So it is 2 units to the right. Okay, and to move it up and down, to move it up, it will be f x plus a, and down will be f x minus a. If y equals to x plus 5, then x plus 5 plus 2 which is my a, a is 2, we'll move it two, 2 units upwards, so it becomes x plus 7, which is the first line, and it is 2 units upwards. And to move it, let's say 3 units down, x plus 5 minus 3 will become x plus 2, which is 3 units downwards. So reflection on the x-axis will be negative fx, and if y equals to 3x minus 2, the negative fx will be equals to a negative bracket, 3x minus 2, and then a close bracket. So it will become negative 3x plus 2, and it will become this green line right here. As you can see, it's reflecting on the x-axis. And to reflect on the y-axis, it will be f bracket negative x. And if y equals to 3x minus 2 also, then f bracket negative x will be equals to negative 3x minus 2. And it will be this purple line right here. And as you can see, it's reflecting on the y-axis. And that's it for me. This my dog muffin. Anyways, let's go. We are going to talk about quadratic functions. So this is an example of translation. As you can see, it translates upwards by 3 squares as you add 3 to the original function, which is x squared. And this is an example of translation horizontally, and this is this can only happen when the function is in the form of x something, and then the entire thing is being squared. As, in, as you can see, it shifts from right to the left as the number changes from negative to positive. And this is an example that shows you how the number affects how the graph looks like. As you can see, it's being enlarged as the number decreases. And this is an example of reflection on the x-axis. In order to reflect on the x-axis from the upper side to the lower side, just add negative in front of x squared. And this is another example. This is an example about reflection on the y-axis. And as you can see, it's from right to the left as number changes from negative to positive. And this is another example of how quadratic function looks like and this is also another example so to wrap it all up let's look at this image and as you can see it shifts to the left when h is smaller than zero and to the right when h is larger than zero in horizontal translations for vertical translations this the original graph looks like this it's x squared and it shifts down when k is smaller than zero up when k is larger than zero and for reflections in the x-axis I have mentioned, in order to flip it over, just add a negative to a negative in front of the x-axis. And for reflections in the y-axis, you cannot really see a difference if the graph is in the form of x squared because y equal x squared is its own reflection in the y-axis. And that's it. Let's move on to qubit functions. Oops. And I'll be explaining cubic functions. A cubic function is a polynomial function of degree 3. So most commonly it's written as y equals to ax to the power of 3 plus bx to the power of 2 plus cx plus d. But it can also be written as y equals x to the power of 3. And most commonly for our purposes we'll be writing it as y equals to a bracket x minus h bracket to the power of 3 plus k. So the first thing I'm going to teach you how to do is translation. Translation is basically moving h up or down, left or right, and also to change the width of the graph. 
So firstly, if you want to move it from left to right, you need to adjust the H. So to move it away from the origin, left or right, to move it left, we change H to a negative number and to move it right, we change H to a positive number. Alternatively, if you want to move it from up to down, K would be a negative number if you want to make it go down and if you want to make it go up, you make K a positive number. So if you want to make the line narrower or wider, you increase or decrease A without changing the positive to negative or negative to positive. So you don't want to like change it from a negative number to a positive number because that will actually flip the equation. So here's, here is a good way to remember it. The smaller number means that it's going to be wider and if it's a big number, it'll make it narrower. So here's an example. Let's say you are given y equals to x to the power of 3 and you want to move the equation up and left and make it narrower. Therefore, the answer would have h be a negative number because it's moving left and k will be a positive number because it's moving up. And lastly, a would be a larger number because it's going narrower. So, let's say you want to reflect it. Reflect it means flip it over. a will become a negative number. So if the previous question I put a as 3, then to reflect it, the a will become negative 3. I hope that makes sense. Hi guys, this video is sponsored by Rage and Legends. Do you want to play the game? No, do your maths. Do it. Go, do it. So let's move on to square root functions. Square root functions equation is y equals to a square root of x minus h plus k outside of the square root. So the question we are going to look at is translation to the left, to the right, up, down, and reflection to the y-axis and the x-axis. Question A is y equals to square root x plus 3. So inside the plus 3, we know that h is minus 3, not plus 3. The equation is like this. There's a negative inside. That's why h is not positive, it's negative. h is negative 3. Thus, from here, we move to the left side. Question B is y equals square root x minus 2. So we know that h is positive 2. It's not negative 2. The graph from here will move to the right. So it will become like this. Drawing will look like this. Question C. Y equals to square root x. Outside the square root is positive 4. That means k is equal to 4. If k is equal to 4, it will move up 4. So the graph will look like that. The drawing will be like that. For D, y equals to square root x. Now outside is negative 3. So negative 3, the graph from here will move down 3 times. So it will look like that. This is the original graph. E, I just put that for reference. So y equals to negative 2. Negative 2 means you reflect the x-axis. x-axis is here. From here we know plus 3 is not plus 3. h is equal to negative. The graph will from here. 1, 2, 3. It will draw like this. So when it reflects the x-axis, it will reflect like that. There you go. So this is the original drawing. F y equals to square root. Inside the square root, the x is negative. It will reflect the y-axis. But before that, h is equals to negative 2, right? k is equals to negative 2. From here, negative 2 will move 2 tiles. So 1, 2 will move here, right? k equals to negative 2, it will move down 2 times. It's 1, 2. So we move like that. You guys see a difference? So it will re reflect the y-axis. The drawing will look like that. So this is the original drawing. There you go. You know root functions and you know how to draw it.